facilities in the conference. We have the worst facilities in the teens outside our conference that used to be in our conference. Um, we're going to have data for you. I know the board asked for data. We're getting that data for you. We're getting you pictures. Um, I know we're concerned about making sure the lights are on every night to justify costs, and we understand that. Um, one of those issues is we can't even have a track meet at the facilities we have. So we're, we're kind of in a bad position, I think, overall for the community as a school. All the other school districts we've looked at have found a way to have their athletic facilities uh, up to code and that can function. And I think the community, and especially the boosters, we're here to help. We've got money. We're glad to raise money. Uh, we just need direction, but there's got to be a direction. Um, so we're just back again to say we're here. We'll keep coming back. We'll bring more data for the school board meeting. Um, if there's something you need from us, again, come on out. Senior night's coming up. Come see how many people are coming in, see how many people can't sit, um, see people with disabilities can't actually get into the bleachers that they have. Um, I think it's really enlightening if you come out and come by the boosters and have a free pop and the pop for you. So that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, that occurs right next to you. Yeah, I think this was, uh, so was such a and maybe the dean gave us a little update. We've got the uh, different subjects, issues, what's going on. And then we've got a little update on the fencing uh, and all that, too. So, uh, do you want to start with something? Uh, yes. Um, what we'll do is, a uh, couple of in progress right now is one, the freezer that's in the process right now. We should, we should probably be, I think it's, Two weeks, we should probably take delivery. I got a call into them now, but today we went ahead and they delivered the uh, sort of say backup or temporary freezer we got going on right now. Um, Dean got that all hooked up today, you said, right, Dean? Yeah. Um, so our plan is to take that, um, get it rolling, move our product from the old one to the new one, take the old one out, and when the new one hits the floor, be ready to go. Um, the fence and the backstop, that's in process already, too. We got everything to them. I know, uh, I think me and Melissa were in contact with uh, the lady about getting everything squared away. I think they were looking to start that. Um, I called her yesterday, and she said they were going to get order material up, so they were looking like the last week of this month, um, beginning of November. So with that, um, um, Caitlin, uh, Yeah, the subject question, and, and it's 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 an ongoing process that I think we're going to take. Um, we're going to ask for a little bit of outside help between me and Dean. When we look at this. I went back and looked at the prints on this job. The first set of prints I looked at was from 1943. Um, the next set of prints that I looked at was from 1966. So as far as chasing something that is a ghost, I think that's what we're. But, but, but when we get into it, I think if we do our due diligence, figure out what's been put in there. Um, I talked to Dave uh, that, um, Ulrich that used to work for Caper, and uh, asked if, if he remembered where that sewer line was tied into. Is it come, the way me and Dean see it was it's coming straight south out of that, out of the school. And does it tie up into 173, or where does it go from that point? Now, I don't know if they've taken and tied that in when they built them condos there that are on the, the southeast corner of that bus turnaround, if it tied in and made a 90 there. But we know if they put a 90 there, they'd have to put a manhole. So um, right now, our problem is the groundwater is so high that what they're calling that on the north end of that building, septic 
when you look at the old prints, it was called a dry well. Um, the concept behind a dry well was to hold water, let it percolate into the ground over time. And there's so much groundwater right now that me and Dean have pumped it. Oh my God, there's columns was out the way and we did some pretty heavy testing. We did some flush testings in uh, upper bathroom. Mm -hmm. We did flush testings in uh, creek caves. One room's going into that septic tank and that's creek cave. Uh, Christy room is the only one in my office goes into that septic. As far as we could tell, it's flush testing. We pumped the one down. We got a man cover over by Amy's off office. It is not tied in with that. It's not a septic part. It's a sewer man cover, and it's full of mud and crap right now. Uh, he's coming tomorrow. We're going to vacuum that out and see where what's going on with that. We also looked at the bathroom today. We went out front, and the one that Jim and I looked at. Um, the second one we looked at, Jim, the one we thought mm -hmm. so that is a sewer mm -hmm. line hook up. The school is going to that there. And so we got to look in a little bit harder. Right now we got about a foot of water in the adjacent cafeteria. We're not sure where that's coming from. He's going to pump that tomorrow. So we got talking a little bit, and I asked him today, I says, um, smart thing, what can we do? He says, route this around and get it hooked into the village. I said, okay, put the ballpark number for me on that. And I said, I can't hold you to it, but give me a ballpark. I said, seven to ten thousand dollars. And that's not tearing up the parking lot. It's going around the school and tying in to the system in the front where you and I were in. Mm -hmm. He believes that he can get elevation with not having to put a lift pump in. But if he had to, that would be extra. But he, he said, by what he can see by his eye, um, he can have elevation by a flowing elevation without doing anything else. Because he can punch in the bottom of that tank and be okay. The first tank we looked at, he said, yeah, he says that's kind of a makeshift. You know, see, that's what, when you look at that print, right. that looks like that was the original that's, containment for the leach field. That's what he's thinking it is. Because there's two cast iron pipes coming into that. Yeah, and he just tied into that one to the other one. And he said that exactly the same thing we said. If there's a 90, there's got to be manhole cover. He said they're tied in out to the highway somewhere. And that's what and I was assuming. So he's going to come back tomorrow. We're going to pump it in because it's going right back in again. He did do some cement, temporary cement work today. But he says, I can't guarantee this. And I said, nobody can guarantee it. Mm -hmm. um, right now, if you walk around the tank, the ground is probably dropped about a foot. If you go around the manhole by Christie, we noticed today it's on about a foot and a half. The ground is just settling around it. It's just a swamp out there. That's about the best update I can give you on that. civil engineer to look at um, and I, I think that'd be a good idea too to have them get involved so we, we take a look at all of what the issues are that are in the some of the options that we've got to so, so they're ready to go to it's one of those ones where I kind of said it's something we need to do sooner rather than later we can't keep pumping it out real big pretty full cool things so. I know Tom's a good guy, but I guess I, that was what I was thinking when Dean was talking about some of the possible options. Is, you know, what does that do for future expansion? You know, yeah. do we really, it's just, you know, we don't want to do the idea that we're going to think we need to take care of it, but we need to make sure it's still We don't trap ourselves down the road into something yeah. else. You know, kind of finish out someplace, you know, kind of kind of sort of line in our way that he's going to begin on it. So, um, I'd be more happy to just get Greg to call right first thing in the morning, keep moving it, get the civil engineer out here. And the other thing is, too, is I want to definitely what we're staring at and all of the, the issues that are currently there. So, like you said, whatever we do, we do it right for the moment. Mm -hmm. So, this is something that's kind of grown over time here. It's getting worse. Okay, we already bought time one truck on that black and all on. I mean, we, we pumped the tank 23 times last year. The last, this last week and a half, we pumped it five already. And it's already back in today, probably a good quarter, if not half, already back in their day. 
How many tank is it? Thousand gallons. And there's a pair of them. No, it's one tank. Does it lead to the next one? But it's one tank with two holes. Um, that's there. This was brought up last year. Heavy. Tom was involved in it himself. He came out and looked at it. He did his suggestions last year. And it was a bypass last year. You know, you can only make a chicken salad out of chicken shit so many times, and it's done now. You know, and there's numerous things in the whole school that are like that. They were supposed to be fixed, but they never got fixed. And I talked to the other guys, and they won't say much. I don't know why, but they're all disgusted for the same reasons. I mean, that's, that was our character. The ones that were kind of giving us a fit here the last week, two weeks, I mean, two. So, and as far as what we decided on between the freezer and the, and the fence and everything, that's, that's the ball's in motion in play. So, that's what we have on that. Did the um, fence and backstop know that was the pricing was subject to an on site review? Correct. So, he, he kept it at that lower price? Correct. Okay. Some wish lists, a little bit of everything there. But I, I really press the principles, I really press the studies that I wanted to list. So when you talk about the rough top unit and needs of children at the upper elementary, is that essentially your condition? Yeah. Or that's so you're gonna see on there a few things where everybody like I said, now you get to we love an air conditioner. Yeah. But I didn't I didn't stop at her so I, I don't you said chiller, I wasn't allowed to be sure I understood it. Uh, I get it from the middle school, the upper, frequently. Uh, Stagnant air when we get hot in the fall. And you're going Well, you kind of like, the fine thing here is you're here to give the kids an education. How can you make the kids sit in the room at 78 degrees and tell them he's got to sit there all day and get it? We've got electrical so bad in that school that, that I have to unplug the copier or plug in a, a laminator. I can't run an air conditioner in the laminator at the same time because I'm tripping breakers because it's just a mess. It's been always been one of my well, concerns when we start throwing it. I brought this up to last year's gym. I had a panel opened up in the hallway. And if you're welcome, I'll come out and show you or you. Um, he said, no, this was just all rewired by an electrician. I says, I don't know who you hired or who followed this. But I said, you don't piggyback breakers 
And she said, especially when I got 40 empty breakers, instead of pigtail and wire, they got breakers piggybacked with two, three different rooms. You, it, that's not what you do, you know. But he said that's the way it was. One of the things I want to be clear in these meetings, we are televising them now, and they're being streamed, and I want to, I really want to keep these on a professional level, and I want to keep it to what Ed is trying to do, is that we're talking about identifying issues that need to be done, and we're talking about going forward. And I, I really want to keep it to that level, that if, if we have an issue where we have breakers tripping, that's our issue, is breakers are tripping. And I, whether it was identified one year ago or two years ago, I, I, that's the way that I want to focus this meeting is, is at that point. And I um, want to set that tone. Okay. So, what's our next step with the review? So, the truth is, you've got, you've got, um, and, and I didn't mean to jump in, but two things. I gave you the list that, the current list that came out of buildings. We still also have the kind of seven-year plan, what we've been calling the 10-year plan, we pick a few things off. Um, the big thing that I'm looking for now is through our discussions is what are we prioritizing to move forward? Um, I think in some of our conversations, you and I, it'd be nice. If when we continue to meet, we're starting to prioritize and narrow down some of these big ticket items. Um, and I guess, I'd like from you, from direction of some of these items on the list, too, are, are, are maintenance. I don't know if that's committee level, you know, if we're looking at the bigger items to come to the committee, some direction there. Uh, but it'd be nice to have um, a plan that we start to move forward by January. And I'm not talking just one year. I'd like to see three, four, or five, and I've got some ideas. Um, the city is uh, rumored to be possibly running capital improvement grants coming out in May. So if we could be solid by January with some solid planning of what we're looking to do with capital improvements and things along those lines, it'd be nice to be able to, um, I, I'm not sure what the form looks like, if it's, if it's something to apply for, but if we're sitting in a strong position with a solid plan, it'd be nice to apply for some capital improvement grants out of the state too. And, and that, that's rumored to be hopefully coming in in May. So, um, and, and one of the things that I will say is, you're looking at building list here too, but um, sometimes too, you're talking about our athletic facilities and our athletic fields. Those are probably things that we gotta talk about. I know we've got some fencing that probably could be re, uh, I'm not, reattached, straightened out. I know we've got some bad fencing spots. We could use ag line or the, the, the stuff you're talking about for some of our baseball fields. Um, Making sure that, I mean, we've got just little, pro we, I don't want to say little, but we have projects to do and make sure that that's part of the overall plan as well. So it's kind of taking a look at everything. So I'll kind of refer to everybody else and say, how do we get there? So, like you and I talk about, it's really where I'd like to focus on is you know, each building or other things that are you know, updating the school, the education process and individual schools for every day. And that's, when we put things together, um, we want principals and plus we want custodians and what's more that interrupts the school day. You know, in individual classrooms, we'll build the principal and just build it by kind of start to walk through the, uh, those as making those some of the priorities. Air conditioning for school, probably something you make a project that sits better into a three to five year plan than, than to try to identify that as a priority for, for next year. Well, both of our guys will probably disagree with that more. <laughs> Two that I pushed into was we still have a few. We're, I mean, we're down there the lower packing order of health life safety issues. I'd like to in the next couple of years pick those off and be done with that. So then our tenure point, our tenure life safety stuff is done. Because so, that, that we have to be able to go. So those, uh, those are obviously those right as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Let's get that done. So do we know what our, what our safety projects are? So I got them listed here. Jim, you chime in if I'm, if I'm missing something. So we have, we have two rooms at the upper elementary that were considered light paid uh, safety hazards because of the liquid carpeting. Um, most of that's in the sixth grade wing. Fifth grade wing has been redone and the new flooring down that way is uh, tile. Sixth grade wing, the two rooms that are identified are the same age as the other four or five
five rooms down there, not the new section, but uh, the other, I don't want to say there's four other rooms down along that way. So they're all the same age. So my comment to Jim was, if we kind of look at flooring, maybe we've got two years now, but if they've all got 20 some years on them, and the other four rooms are the same age and right behind it, we're, you know, you're about the same time limit anyways. So, um, so we got the UE flooring. We still got signage at the middle school, Manchester, upper and topic roll. Is that correct on that? Yes. Yeah. Um, we've got smoke doors at Paper. Uh, we talked a little bit about that. We have talked to the architect on that, and that does take a, a he, he's saying that we've got some issues depending on how we want to do it. Just because the way it's set up, there's not a clean way to do it to meet, uh, to meet code. Um, so we might want some architectural planning in that. And I didn't put this, this isn't a life safety issue, but I did put it down only because of our conversation with the generator at the high school. Although it's not life safety, it is one of those things that when we built that, we talked about that being a community, kind of a life safety center um, type thing. And I, so I threw it there as something to look at as, if, if our high school is going to be a community shelter type thing, and one of the things that we, we brought to that was to say that that generator should be able to run that facility there. Obviously we're not there. What do we need to do to get that result? So I, I threw that life safety is technically not a, an official uh, item. That could be taken off at some So just, I guess, a resident information for people here who don't know life safety and stuff it does not have to come out of the, the sales tax money. We could tour it for that in a different form, correct? And is that funding already available to finish those projects? So, so this year there's 55000 in life safety fund we budgeted from last year. Um, we essentially usually levy about 50000 into that fund. Um, there may be a fund balance in there too, but I'm not sure how much is in there. Probably around 80000 um, in the fund balance, but um, this year's budget in that community is about 50000 So do we know from Jimbo what the projects that are identified as life safety be covered by the 50000 do you have any sense of where we stand there? I got a little bit of a guess. Yeah, I, I, I don't write off the top of my head, but so our placeholder for the, for the flooring for UE is twenty-five thousand, um, and roughly five thousand for the the life safety code signage that's needed at each of those schools. So that's another twenty. Um, not sure on the caper and smoke door, the, the smoke required doors for caper, um, and that would be one where we probably have to ask the architect. So right there, where you at about 40,000, 45,000. This, this You're close. The same, just 20,000. Five total per school. It's oh. kind of expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some signs. They don't even light up. <laughs> so it is simple. One of the things, um, and this will tie into the business piece of it too, is that as I look at that list and the, the talk that we had in the the spreadsheet that you had even the last visit where you kind of broke the projects into what fund they came out of. I think one of the things as I look at this what would help me a lot is if Wilson and Jim, Jim will kind of work on a sheet to where now put the dollar amounts on these whether they come out of capital or operational expense and start prioritizing them because if like for instance if the life safety drops into its own bucket it becomes pretty clear that that can be a one, two, three, or a one, two, and maybe one of those that you want to have done would have to come out of the regular fund. But I, I think if the two of them could start working on that, and we kind of that's kind of see where it's at, where it gets that list gets put into capital or operational, I think that would help a lot going into the next meeting to get the list where you want it and kind of see where we're at with things. So do you want to just touch base on that? Yeah, so I've been working on kind of an idea of after the last minute trying to get this um, and I, um, of having something where we have all the projects listed, we have a placeholder of, and then Tom, I need to talk about having a section where you have, if it goes out to bid, what did the bid come in? And so we kind of know what is our 
placeholder, what's our bid, where is it, what fund is it going to come out of, and then what's the final cost of the project. So then we can kind of keep track of, okay, this came in over, we've got some another project that we can bump up, or this is came in more, so we're going to have to get rid of the project. And that way, if we do it on a monthly or whatever basis, and just give an email out of here's where we're standing, then you guys can kind of follow the projects as opposed to you know, some kind of idea. But from you guys, I kind of need a what's on the list, so I can put a on that too on what. What do we need? We kind of put together a sample format mm -hmm. of what we use. We'll share that with you guys. Yeah. It's an input that you say, hey, is this, what we, is this easy? Yeah. That's what I was trying to build the discussion. I was trying to say, you know, I think it's easy to prioritize a little safety if it's already going to flood itself. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if, if we are where we are, what we say we are, you know, I don't see why we couldn't go ahead and start getting some, some real, get some, get the ball going on, some of that stuff to, get, to finish getting it done. Am I speaking out of here? And I'd kind of to do that, especially the same stuff, just well, fix by yourself. Like carpeting, if we're going to do a carpeting project, I totally agree with you. Open up, if we're going to do carpeting, to do it all, and have it all done, it's just, it's it's just, just be easier to know what we're going to we'll be right back there in a year or two. They'll just come back and pick us and pick on us in the next two classrooms. So if you're going to go to safety issue, and just finish it, and get done while you're there. So are you going to bring us the something for the like, safety piece. I can do whatever you, you want well, for that. It's just a discussion. So yeah. I'm simply asking, you know, if, if we've got if we've got the budget except for the life safety stuff. So, so then some of that is not necessarily a summer project you do. So right now as I stare at the signage we can keep moving on. We can keep that moving on if I got permission to do that. Um, the flooring Obviously, we're going to work. There's you can talk carpeting, you can talk tile, you can talk no wax tile. Um, I've kind of put it back to Jim and Jared and Dave to start to have those conversations because just about any one of those things you're going to pick. What I like about it, carpeting's nice, holds the noise down. Winter is a little warmer. It's also an allergen. It, uh, it, it it comes up. Um, tile's easy to clean. A no wax tile, we hear that that's good stuff, but then I also hear that it sounds better than what it ends up being because you're coming back to do a lot of the, the, the waxing and all that type of material within a couple of years. I think you get 25 years on a curb, then you'd be hurt, and I just put the curb right back in it. And as a principal, I liked it. It kept it quiet. It just was a little warm. And I said, if you if you go to Tile, I know it's coming. Teachers like to bring in remnants of rugs and put the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they like to bring remnants of rugs in because they want the kids like to sit on the floor. Sometimes they want to create an educational atmosphere where kids can get together and read and talk and, and stuff. So, to me, it's about the, back to the environment piece. What is what is it saying to us where the kids are going to live? And I know carpets a lot. Can't give me time. some ideas for a board meeting. Let's get started on, on the life safety stuff. We'll get some, we'll get some hard numbers together so we can be looking at Sarah and her budget and potentially get something to do something soon. Where are you talking about, Toby? And we're already kind of starting to move forward with bits and quotes and conversations on the car uh, or excuse me, the floor of the year. So we separate the life safety stuff out from some of the other projects that are here. What are, what are the different funds that would be left for some of the other projects that are left here? So we have life safety, we have capital projects, which is like sales tax money, and then we have our O&M general fund. Um, that one's a little bit harder to get like a, a concrete budget per se for because you know you could buy something out of their supply budget, but you know if it's not a capital price. So those can come out of building budget or the district budget. That own up one is much larger, obviously, but it, it's got a little bit more flexibility. But it also is is um, is used for you know their cleaners and stuff like that. So those are the funds. The capital projects is the other one. There's about um, this year I think the budget was about three hundred and twelve thousand that we budgeted. I think you guys remember there was um, probably I think forty thousand or so that we did not budget. That was revenue expected to come in that was not taken. There is some, some fun, but that's the kind of projects. So just those three. When you have a rough draft, what are you looking for for October? Do you think you need to look for something like that? 
I can have a look, Director, and I kind of have something in mind, too. Um, it's just kind of meeting what projects we're going to put on. Um, and this is kind of where we're going. And that we always can have, too. But I can have a look, Director, and I can have something on. Like examples of what goes into what? Like just off the top of your head from you know, I'm not anybody to it, no. but just, just some rough examples of why we would separate those two. One of it is cost. So the capital projects fund, usually I put, we usually put the big stuff in, right? So we, we want to make sure that we can capital it. So it's usually our parking lots or our roofs or, you know, the bigger stuff. Now, like there's a, a floor scrubber or some chairs or some of the signage sometimes we can put in the O&M fund just because it's a much smaller amount and usually those budgets are smaller than the capital project spot so you can you know, do a lot more smaller projects out of those. So that would be the... And the difference like the Cape and Cooler, mm -hmm. if that had stayed under 5,000, well, what was the, what throws that from being like an op, an op expense to a capital, is it? 3,000, 5,000, what's the capital threshold is 2,500 to be okay. a, a capital project, so that's going to throw us. It has to be above that. It has to be above that. It has to have a lifespan of over a year um, to be. And then the sales tax has additional restrictions or things <laughs> that yeah. allow you to maybe use it for an expense. It doesn't, it, sales tax doesn't necessarily have to be used for a capital item. Correct, but it has to be used in building. It, we designated it for building, and then the, the bond agreement is the other part of it, but we designated it for building, so we have the building funds. There's a couple different funds in there, but most of the stuff is for our big projects. But we have knocked out smaller stuff. You know, if you have a little bit left, you can knock out some projects here. Jim, what would you have a sense of what projects you're going to try to knock out for the between now and the end of the school year? Or is there anything, anything else? Oh, yeah, I think we're going to go with that. If you're going to cut the health, life, safety, and the other, you know, that science needs to be done, the carpet is going to I mean, that's falling for me out of health, life, safety. Um, going through the list here, I know we have, well, if you're going to refer back to the planning to, to make a job, I mean, I know there's, there's uh, doorways that need to be placed, you know. Um, there's a few, um, you know, there was one with LED lights that a couple of guys have asked me about the high school. I think Jim set that up last year, year before. Um, I know Dean talked about it too at Cape um, But is it, is it something that needs to be done? It's a project project that he's pushing. But as far as getting a complete list of what we're going to try to accomplish, I mean, we'll work off our seven to ten and whatever we put back together on next list so propose whatever you want us to look forward to I guess. Should we really help if everybody just gave you like top five items that they both think need to be done? I mean what we have to see though. Well if, yes. Okay. It could. I mean then the next question is is then their wants and needs. I mean at some point when somebody comes and they want air conditioning what am I going to give it to them? Yeah. I mean it's going to go to you guys. And then you guys are going to give me the blessing, correct? So I mean, we'd love to put the project together, certainly. But it's basically what you're going to direct us to do, or what? When some of these are going to be a hundred items, if you only have five, could that help a lot? No. Well, I mean, some of these you can pick off if you read through this. Some of this stuff is. I mean, it's you can get some of the stuff done that are just basic first. So we need to go through it, but I mean, for a project, project, um, you know, some of the smaller items are quick. So I did target a few that I just see. Um, obviously, that paper subject, we got to move on that and come up with a solution for that. Um, the other one that I see is larger projects. Um, the school, Manchester Middle School, UEK. So we've got, uh, we got to prioritize most of but we've got a lot of doors. They're starting to just rust at the bottom. Um, I think they call doors and storefronts, but some of those windows. Manchester, I know, has one spot that's really bad. Upper's got a post that's, we've, we've put all brackets in there. So I think that those have to be some items that are, I, I get home in the near future. 
you know, near future. Uh, I saw so. that it's a storefront up at the football field where it says Russell through the one up here. So the one, the one that would be at the upper elementary coming out of the cafeteria towards the football game. That one we've got some tall black and some kind of bubble down the floor. And you can see that's getting rusted. You see a gap starting to show. You know, so that's we're at a, a near future with one of that. Middle school's got a door, Capron's got some doors that got that type of stuff. Um, and for me to go back, I have not gone to compare each one, but I'd probably say we probably need to start to pick two or three of those off. That were our worst, then roll into the next, and yeah, just kind of a roll along with those. Um, I'd like to get those sliders out of the, the Capron uh, cafeteria. Jim and I got a plan on that. Good. So I'd like to get those gone next. Um, and that's kind of the, I don't know how much money is there, but it's more of a, that's a job. It's going to be a job. Um, those are some of the smaller ones there. And then as I was looking, like almost each building, there's a bunch of even smaller items than that. Or like as I was talking to Jim, if we can get some of that stuff in, we can pick some of those littler things off, up and down the line or not. And that's what you're thinking about working out there in the school year between us. Exactly. Yeah. Is there a way that you can put that list together and give sure. us the numbers for what yeah. we need that that's sure. what be looking at? I'm scrambling Friday to try to make sure I got all these lists. Jim and I had that chance to talk to That's right. Yeah. You know, and, and going back to your question, I mean, I just think part of we can lay it out and give exactly what we want to do, but, you know, like Mike said, that's not a problem. I'll, I'll put that together for you. So I kind of walked through the list and just kind of said in my mind what I saw is these are issues, near future issues we got we got to put a place on this one. So then I guess our own work for lack of a better term is we're gonna have some budget numbers for the life safety. We're gonna get some feedback from the custodians and principals of each school to kind of prioritize the top five and maybe a bottom five or a second five projects for each school that sure that kind of fit in what we're that what we're talking about. I think what I'll do is I'll put top five needs on that, not the wants, you know. That's right. That's not, that's where I was going. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to trust that the principals, exactly. and the principals have some heartfelt discussions about prioritize this. What do we need to prioritize this? So that we're okay with where we're going at that time. Yeah, I, it's a, yeah, it's a big thing we're trying to, to gather here, and that, you know, that's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, I guess one of the things I see is that typically we're marching to January where we're trying to put what would be usually the larger piece of capital that we're trying to get lined up for summer projects. And I guess that's ultimately as we start fine tuning this, as long as we're kind of working towards that and this list starts, starts going because there's a lot of things I talked about a safety walkthrough that may pop up some things. There's hopefully things that are the discovery process is still going and we're trying to, to do this. Um, the other part in this that I I still haven't wrapped my mind around and, and we've heard it now in a couple meetings with the stadium is um, I would sure like to see what our thoughts are for the stadium. I mean, we're, we're hearing this. Um, we put this twenty-five thousand dollars in here. I would, in my mind, I don't know how we start wrapping around something like that. And whether it's we take that twenty-five thousand, you put it in a bank account somewhere, and we start firming that up. But I would like to start hearing how we start bringing that together, and what would a multi-year approach look like? What what would a debt approach to solving it look like? What would a debt bring? Um, we talked at last board meeting. There's a lot, and there's a lot of competing things for that, even that twenty-five thousand. But I would like to start having those discussions. Um, do you want to go to October? What's that? So one of the things that I did because I had not seen and I requested was the first time, and I was here at that moment. Um, my little window right there. What were some of the prices that were kind of You know some of those things. So I did get some of that back from the architect of what we shared. I'd be one having to bring some of that to the board meeting, if you see that appropriate, or to the next facilities. Um, and it was really kind of a menu item of, if you did this, if you did this. I was trying to get my arms around some of the costs. Like, what are we dealing with? You know? um, 
the last time they did that, my recollection and kind of it was that we were wrapping up these roofing projects. We had some major expenses that we we didn't even have twenty five thousand to set aside. We were talking a couple hundred thousand on this, and we really had this stuff being heaped up. But now I'm I'm getting the feeling in one part that all those projects are done, so it's time to dust that off and take a look at it. And certainly the community is is asking us to do it. But then on the other side, we get the distinct feeling, well, there's some things that we still have neglected that we need to address. And I think bringing it up, having the discussion, and at least sharing what that plan is, I, I you know, I think we need to do it. Um, so that's kind of where, where I'm at, and then kind of every, get every, you know, get our finance and our building on the same page and making sure when we look at a set of numbers, we we agree that that's the set of numbers that I think is what what I'm looking for. And I guess when I, I got this, I'd like to bring up one other thing. When air conditioning comes up, for instance, I remember Ed and I, and I think it was when Melissa was looking at utility bills and, and contracting them out, Ed picked up on something about um, the month of August, how we spike utility bills in August, even probably with the limited air conditioning. And I guess, to me, we always have to think about what drew us into starting school as early as we're starting. And are we throwing kids into hot classrooms that we really aren't accommodating that we could solve without putting air conditioners on the roof just starting school after Labor Day? It would cut our utility bills and things. And, and sometimes, to, to me, we get to a place where we do something because we kind of, for whatever reasons, we made academically to bring it in. But our kids are suffering in hot classrooms that they wouldn't really have to as much if we just postponed school. So I never want to lose sight of that, too, that sometimes it isn't the answer to put air conditioning on the roof. But look at why we made a decision to start school when we did. And maybe it makes sense to push it back. So. I want all, all of that stuff to be discussed or be thought of by administration, and it's okay to come back and say, well, you know, we did this for because it made it good for a winter break, but in hindsight, our kids, the our kids are sweating. Is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, kids are sweating. Yeah. The idea behind it is that the high school could get the semester done by Christmas. Yeah. There, there are three, there are actually three, 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 three things to it. One, it's a balance of semesters. Um, one of the things when you look at it for people who have finals after, um, who have finals after Christmas, Christmas break, you typically lose about a week and a half in there. Typically, like I, well, I've discussed with the uh, staff, to only have you know no more than three days of review before finals. And then what happens is a lot of times you try to finish things up before the end of the before the semester break, and then when you come back, it's not enough time to start something new but you still have all this time to get through to the end. Now, there are some possibilities of throwing, still still doing your finals before break, and then just extending a week and a half. And, and I mean, it's a possibility. While it doesn't make sense sequentially, that's a possibility. The other aspect is, especially when we are um, assessed off of how students perform on, on certain items and tests and whatnot, you can get more content in before an SAT and, and IAR, PARC, all that kind of stuff um, in that sense, you know, by, by having an earlier start rather than a, a late start. It's supposed to be more days five. of instruction. A three, yeah. you know, a three week swing in instruction. So, I, I mean, it's not just a matter of, you know, a couple simple thoughts. There's been quite a bit of thought that has been put into it. I do want to make people aware of it now. I also understand that I know, the high you know, air conditioning. <laughs> the, the, the high So I, you know, I, I do understand that aspect of things, and and so. So in, in, like when I sit in my labor management, if I listen to elementary teachers in my middle school, they say, "Why don't we start after Labor Day?" If I, the high school likes. That that crunch. So, in fairness, though, I mean, I'm assuming that the Rockford School District had this discussion, and they went ahead and said they went to push back. I'm assuming that the state of Wisconsin had those discussions. Yeah. And it's the law in Wisconsin, you right? Right. Until after Labor Day. And so that, that was, Wisconsin was also something kind of with like the economy too. You know, the number of people that visit and um, the tourists and stuff like that. So that was part of it. 
um, Rockford, and I've met, I've talked with Matt Osborne about this a few times. Their idea was they have so many schools that are not air conditioned. Um, they chose to do that this year, and um, and then what they did is they they taken some less days off, and they're still off by June third. So. Mm -hmm. My, so it's all right just to talk about it. Yeah, it, it really is, and, and my comment is is it, it doesn't matter to me. I got to be here anyway, so all, all year. So, but you yeah, know, those are, and I don't mind if they give me some direction with where you want to go or what you want to do. But yeah, those are those are what you see as stuff. I guess to me, it's always good to revisit a decision you made it how many years ago. You had a chance yeah. to now sit in the heat. You've had a chance to look at test scores yeah. and. Do you, the benefits that you see in your student body offset over here, and, and maybe it, it does. I, that's, I just don't want to see us go down this thought process that says we're doing this, and then we allow air conditioners, and now it causes problems with circuits oh, right, and some have and some have not. And is it good to, are we getting the benefit that we thought for the cost that's over here? Yeah. I know when we looked at the electrical bills, all the savings that we got from um, going to the cheapest carrier, you could almost double it just by starting, by getting rid of that peak load at the end of August. So um, that was my one thing. And I guess the other thing, before I let you have your meeting back, I'm sorry about this, <laughs> was, the, um, was a comment that's been made a couple times about the safety of our bleachers and things. And the one thing I want to make clear is it is my understanding that while we may have facilities that lack what we would love to have out there, we are in no way in, in a safety violation. We have those bleachers inspected, and we have no, I, I don't want any other kind of inference to be made from any comments made by the state, the state of our equipment. That's what my understanding is as a board member, is that we have safe equipment out there. We may not have enough of it, but there's, it, it is inspected, and, and we are in compliance. Okay. Yeah. That was my other thing. I, in kind of listening to our meeting last time, I, you could have come away with a different opinion. So, okay. I for where I'm at in the stadium, but I've always shared this with Mike a number of times. I, everything that we have needs to be Everything that we have needs to be better. We need to be better academically. We need to be better athletically. We need to have better programs. But in no way, shape, or form, I'm opposed to doing something. Uh, what I am opposed to is using a whole year's worth of sales tax revenue to focus on the project. So if the project, if that project were to come to us in bits and pieces to put new bleachers up one year and then do something else the following year, to actually grow that stadium to where it needs to be with the concession stand so that there's room for track, I think that though that's reasonable over a period of time, and that, that's where I would be in. Anything else you have the direction you guys need? Give me a little summary back on what you want from October for me, son. So I'm good. I guess I'll more to find to some to get a share from Mary time if that you want something to, to get a, but like an idea of where we're gonna be for specific expenditures for life safety to try and get as many of those projects done. Uh, second thing I guess I that I'd like to see is more projects do you intend to try and do during the school year. Yeah. By the end of the school year, that will come off of this seven to ten year list that are over here on the side. Perfect. And then the custodians and the principals are going to work collaboratively to prioritize the list of lists um, from needs to needs. Now, you had not wants. I just couldn't say, hang on. I just know that, that we have something that, that, that we can have some fair rationale between buildings across the school district for where we spend the money. So I'll have that for the October meeting. Um, do you want to set a date for November? Because sure. November runs early because of a board conference and Thanksgiving. Um, December runs early because of Christmas break. And like I said, I, I like to have some discussions where we start to prioritize some of those things. If we start to have our arms around some pretty good projects by January, I think we're sitting good for spring work and whatever else we want to do long term with long term plans should, should grant money up to them. I know I'm, I travel to the first and 23rd of November. We'll all be together again. Yeah, um, 
do we? Do you know? Do you know what our board meeting is for the twelfth? We we moved it up, and Thanksgiving is a week later than it normally is. We actually could have left our board meeting this year. Normally, we do move it up a week because of conference, but we could have left it at the normal week. I think we just, just look at the calendar. Yeah, because Thanksgiving is so extremely late. What is today? Ninth. 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 If we did, um, so if we did the board meeting is the 12th. The 12th. If you went the 6th, the Wednesday night of the 6th, does that work? Too early? Does that work for everybody? Does that work for the November 6th? Do you want to go ahead? It depends on your schedule because you're right. You made it in. I know sometimes we talk about the time for convenience. If you want to go after school at 3 45, 4 o'clock, it, it, it depends on your work schedules. I'll do it after house. I prefer to keep it in around the 5 o'clock, the 5 time frame. Especially each of the other. I don't anticipate a policy meeting. Um, there's a meeting meeting October 25th. I'm not sure, you know, on the business side, if we've got another one, if we solve our levy sub tonight, because November will be presenting the levy when we get this vote. So, okay. I need some backup. I wrote myself a note. I didn't touch base with it. We got started with something else, but you're talking about the generator. Would it be make sense to have a rule to come back in and explain? I think we have to. Listed out as being completed the way it was anticipated to do. It's not functioning the way it should have. Or the way we anticipated the way it was supposed to. Right. Um, so, and I know through my, some of my conversations, where you're going back was our big thing. And it almost sounds like we have to go to the world. So, um, you know, Jim. But actually, I'll, Jim, I'll work with you on it because I know math. I think math is the that whole part of it. We'll, we'll give him a call. Discussion and planning for 2012 and 2021 projects beyond. We've already kind of, I guess, kind of already touched on that. Is there anything else specific? No, just trying to get our arms around discussion and prioritizing. Is there anything else? Any other business to come before the committee? Anything else anybody will discuss? All right. Thank you for your time. We'll see you on November 6th. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. So,